Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff that I found for this episode. Over at makezine.com, the Thing system aims to revolutionize home automation. Marshall T. Rose was recently at the O'Reilly Video Studio to discuss the Thing system. It's an open source solution for both home automation and controlling the Internet of Things. It's currently in alpha, but already boasts an impressive array of functionality with devices as varied as light bulbs and Tesla automobiles. Where it differs from other home automation systems is in its versatility. The Thing system isn't a standalone entity, but one that can adapt to a variety of devices over several wireless protocols. Using machine learning, it will also have the capability to anticipate the user's behaviors, turning it into a true piece of assistive tech rather than a glorified remote control. So this sounds pretty awesome. Definitely looking forward to a digging into this and checking it out and finding out a little bit more about it because I'm all into automation and making life easier because, you know, I have negative free time. So, <laughs> I mean, I can always free time up, but it'll be at the expense of doing something else. So, anyway, um, the next story that we have is uh, from Hack a Day, a DIY solution for controlling robots and quadcopters. RC transmitters are used for controlling robots, quadcopters, airplanes, and cars, and really aren't that complex. There are a few switches, pots, a screen, and a radio transmitter. The Maker Toolbox already has all these components, so it only makes sense someone would try to build their own RC transmitter, which they have. Oscar's project started by gathering a bunch of toggle switches, two-axis joysticks, pots, tact switches, an Arduino, LCD, and a Sesco, uh, Sesco, Ses Seseco XRF wireless module. These were attached to a front panel made of polystyrene and work on the communications protocol began. So there's a uh, two, nearly two and a half minute uh, YouTube video. Definitely uh, check it out. This is pretty neat. From The Verge, Intel joins the maker movement with Arduino partnership. Um, they are... Uh, let me rephrase this. So at the Rome Maker Fair, um, the new CEO of Intel, Brian Krantznik, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I don't know how it's pronounced if you're watching this. Um, he has announced that Intel's new Galileo development board, which is designed to be a cheap and accessible platform for homebrew computer th enthusiasts to build upon, um, it's powered by Intel's tiny Quark X1000 system on a chip. It's fully compatible with Arduino Shields and moreover will form the basis for a future collaboration between Intel and Arduino. So the initial goal uh, with Galileo is to get the hardware adopted by educational institutions um, for hands-on engineering teaching and to that end Intel is donating 50,000 development boards to a thousand uni universities across the globe. They'll be distributed over the next 18 months while retail availability is planned for the end of November. So the main attraction of the Galileo board looks to be its variety of interfaces, which includes PCI Express and the ability to act as both a USB device and host. So pretty neat. There's a, a little over three and a half minute video uh, up on YouTube that's linked up in the, in the article here. Definitely check it out. Pretty awesome. From Engadget, the latest Rasp BMC update brings speed boost and bug fixes and more. Two months have passed since we last saw an update to the Raspberry Pi port of XBMC, but the tail end of September finally delivered some fresh code. Chief among the changes is a speed boost that makes browsing media libraries on Rasp BMC much smoother and snappier. With the new software on board, boxes now have a bevy of bugs fixed. 
uh, boast support for Windows Media Center PVR and have a wake on LAN feature for flipping on remote hardware before XBMC starts. So pretty awesome. Um, if you rely on AirPlay, don't upgrade to iOS 7 just yet as it could introduce some hiccups. Um, pretty cool. There's Again, there's a YouTube video up. Definitely check it out. From Slash Gear, the FAA reportedly okays use of electronics on planes during takeoff and landing. Pretty neat. Definitely uh, something that's welcome. <laughs> I don't understand. Half the time I forget to turn my phone off because I, I flying for me is one of the worst. I, I just, I don't like flying and it's, you know, I, I'm so frenetic that I more often than not forget to turn my phone off. And I know the vast majority of people don't even bother turning their phone off. It would be great if, you know, if we would just not have to go through all that and we can, you know, I just don't want to do it. All right. From Jalop Nick, mind blowing NASA photos of fighter jets show how a shock wave forms using telescopes and a photography technique used to capture the flow around moving objects. Scientists at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center managed to capture some incredible images that show exactly what a jet does to the air when it goes supersonic. This is awesome. There is a video. Uh, definitely check this out. Pretty neat. From makezine.com again. Um, there, we talked about the middle board a few episodes back. Um, there's an update. Middle board raises the bar on embedded computing. John Bike Tell, again, sorry about names, uh, was at the World Maker Fair uh, and uh, definitely uh, he got a chance to check out the Minnow board, the new open source microcontroller board that is going after the Raspberry Pi market, not by emulating the Raspberry Pi, but by blowing it out of the water with a 4-inch $200 mini PC running Angstrom Linux on an Intel Atom CPU. You get x86, x86 compatibility, so... There's a lot of software that you could don't have to have. You can compile with GCC. You don't have to do anything special. Um, gigabit Ethernet, a gig of DDR2 RAM, as well as a bunch of GPIO pins that hardware hackers like. It's a brand new platform. There's not a lot of accessories, however. Uh, they have released the specifications for the add-on boards called Lures, enabling fans to start building compatible open source projects. So pretty interesting. Definitely check it out. Um, you know, the middle board holds a fair amount of promise for me. Just, you know, the processing power alone, the fact that it's got a SATA port, you know, this is, uh, we're definitely getting into interesting territory here. So uh, take a look. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.